What's going on, analysts? Welcome to another episode of our All About Analysis YouTube channel, where we bring you interviews and tutorials about everything crime analysis. In today's video, we answer a how-to question from an analyst examining call detail records using i2 Analyst Notebook. Let's go ahead and get started. Our question today comes from an analyst by way of the IACA discussion forums. Our analyst is using i2 and has imported multiple target phone CDRs for call detail records and wants to know how to identify and visually display phone numbers that have been in communication with at least two or more of our target phones during a specific time period. We have two industry experts that have offered their approach to this problem. Our first solution comes from Rachel Carson, Vice President of Membership of the IACA and Analytical Director for Future and Consulting and Training, a global provider of intelligence and analysis services. She's based out of the UK and was featured on this channel just last week. So click on the link above to watch her interview. Rachel, thanks for spending your time. Welcome back to the channel and take it away. Thank you very much, Manny. So I2 Analyst Notebook is both a visualization and analysis tool. But far too frequently, we just use it to visually represent our data and intelligence. But actually, we can ask a lot of questions of our data using features within I2. Now, very often you need to combine these features in order to reach your answer. Now, as Manny said earlier, we recently received a great question um, about how to draw insight from call data records. The analyst in question had CDR for a number of target telephones and wanted to know whether there were any phone numbers that were in contact with two or more of her targets. This is a great question for helping to identify other potential members uh, within an organized crime group. Now, I2 Analyst Notebook is a very flexible tool, and to answer any question like this, there are usually multiple methods for reaching your answer. And your chosen method will be whichever you feel most comfortable with. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm using Analyst Notebook version 9.2.1. And I'm going to show you one simple method for answering this question, which involves the use of functions within both the select and analyze menus. And you'll see these both as the tutorial goes on. Now, the chart that you can see here shows some sample CDR, and we have six target phones, all highlighted with a red frame. Hopefully, you can all see that. Now, firstly, to answer this particular question, you will need to select your target phones. Now, as there are only six of them, I will do this by selecting one of them and then holding down the control key on my keyboard, and then selecting the other five. Gee, that one didn't pick up, there we go. Okay, so we now have the six target phones all selected. Now I2 gives you the ability to define groups of chart items. And by doing this, it means that your group can be recalled quickly at any time and used for further analysis. And that's what we're going to do here. So what we're going to do is we're going to define a group for our target phones, these six phones that are red. We will make this selection set one. So you do this by going to the select menu. And then where it says selection set one, we click on the down arrow and we can click on add to set. You will now see that a yellow box with a number one appears beneath each of our target phones. I'm zooming a little bit there so you can see that there. So all of those six phones now have a yellow box underneath it with a number one. That means that they all belong to selection set one. Now, the shortcut to do that is control one on your keyboard. If I just remove that selection set, also by selecting control and one, you'll see that those yellow um, markers have now disappeared. 
Okay, they've now gone because I hit control one, but I'm going to now put them back because we need them in our uh, selection set. So I'm going to select them all again, all six. And this time, rather than going to the selection menu here, I'm just going to press control and one on the keyboard and the number one appears in the yellow box underneath each one again. So we now have our target phones and we can easily recall these so we can easily select them by using alt and one. So if I press alt and one, it will highlight all of the um, entities that I have put into selection set one. But now we want to find out whether, uh, so we want to find out what other phones these target phones are connected to and whether there are any that are connected to two or more of these. So to help us answer this, we are going to stay within our um, select uh, menu and we're going to use the between selected feature, which is over here. Now there are, if you click on the down arrow there, you'll see there are two options in the between selected tool. The first one will just show us direct links between two phones, which isn't what we want. We don't want to know phones that are connected directly. We want to know whether there are any phones that sit between our target phones. So we choose the second option, which is entities linked to more than one selected entity. So if we click on that now, we must have our um, uh, target phone selected first, otherwise this won't, this won't work. So with those highlighted, we click on between selected, entities linked to more than one selected entity. And what this has done is it's highlighted the phone numbers which are connected to two or more of our targets. But what it's also done is highlighted the links between them and also our target phones are highlighted. Now, what we only want to highlight the phones that are connected to two or more of our target phones. So although we're getting closer to our answer, this isn't the full answer. So we can address this by using another selection set and also with the help of one of the analysis features in i2 called Visual Search. Now, first of all, we need to add everything that we've got selected here now from that between selected uh, tool. We need to add this to a new selection set. Now, this time we're going to use the, the keyboard only. We're going to use the control and the number two because we're going to add it to the second selection set. The number always relates to the number of the, the set that you're adding, um, adding the, the, um, the chart items to. So uh, we're going to press, with all of that highlighted, so all the links and all the entities highlighted, we're going to press Control and 2. And you'll see now what that has done. If I just come here and I can zoom in. Is it's put a number 2 in a yellow box beneath all of the links and entities that were selected via the between selected um, tool. Now. Selection set two contains our target phones, plus the phones that are connected to two or more of the target phones and the links between them. And if you remember, selection set one is just our target phones. So effectively, selection set one is a subset of selection set two. Now, we only want to see the phones that are in selection set two but not in selection set one because we don't want the target, target phones included and we don't want the links included. So one way of doing this, um, or to see the phones that are in two but not one, is by using the visual search feature on the analyze tab. We come along here. Visual search is, is uh, in the find items um, tool there. Now, Visual Search allows us to query our charts using specific criteria in a visual way. So I click on it and it'll open up the dialog box. There we go. It has two options uh, to search for single entities or linked entities. 
Now, for the purpose of answering this particular question, we are only interested in finding individual entities, or in this case, um, our phones. And the way it works is you build up your query using the criteria in the lower half of the dialog box. And then the top half helps you to visualize what that criteria is, hence it's called a visual search. Now, if you've used visual search recently, uh, make sure you select reset to get a clean um, blank canvas to work with. Now, to answer a question, we are specifically looking for phones in our data. Now, um, on this chart, because it's just CDR, actually, they're the only type of entities that we've got are the phones. So this first step here isn't entirely necessary, but I'm going to include it just to be neat and tidy. I think my, my OCD is, uh, is coming out here. So where it says type, we're going to select mobile phones. And as you select mobile phone, what you can see is that the icon in this picture above changes to a mobile phone icon. So that means that this visual search is going to look for mobile phones in the chart. Now, you'll remember that um, we want to find all the phones that are in selection set two, but not in selection set one. So we're going to take this step by step. First of all, we want visual search to help us find the phones in selection set two. Now, selection sets are saved as attributes in I2. So the criteria that we need to set is here in attribute class. So we click on the down arrow and at the top here, you can see the attribute selection set one and selection set two. Now we need to start off with all of our selection set two. So we select that there and then we say equal to yes. And to confirm, you can look at the picture above and it says, right, what this search is going to do is it's going to show all the mobile phones that have got a select or that are part of or belong to selection set two. Now we must make sure that we are searching at this point across all of our chart items. So on this right hand side, make sure it says search items all. And then click on OK. And at this point, I2 tells us that we have 12 entities selected. And these are the phones that belong to selection set two. Now, you'll remember previously we had uh, phones and we had the links in selection set two. So now we're just looking at the phones. And those phones are the ones that are both our target phones and the phones that sit between our target phones. So. With all of those phones from selection set two still highlighted, what we next need to do is um, remove from this the target phones. Now, our target phones are the phones which belong to selection set one. So with all of these highlighted, we conduct a second visual search. So we click on visual search again. And again, we're going to conduct um, a visual search on a single entity. But this time, where we, uh, we, we're going to change the attribute class, where we chose um, selection set two before. Now, we're going to choose selection set one. Um, and where we, what we want to do is we want to identify all of the mobile phones that don't have selection set one. So we actually change it rather than being equal to yes, which we had before. It's now it's selection set one is absent. And the picture above then confirms this. Now, this time on the right hand side, where it says search items, we need to change this from all to selected. So now what I2 is going to do, or what visual search is going to do is it's going to look at just the ones that were highlighted before in section set two but then remove the ones that belong to selection set one. So it's only going to look across the ones that were already highlighted. So these are the phones from selection set two. If we didn't do this, visual search would basically search across the entire chart and it will show us every phone that doesn't belong to selection set one, which is practically the entire chart. It's the majority of the chart, all but six um, chart items. So obviously we don't want to do that. 
So we're just searching across the ones that were um, previously selected, and then we can click on OK. And this highlights now just the phones which are connected to two or more of our target's phones. And there are six in this particular example. Okay. So you can see they're all highlighted there. Now, obviously, you can then change the formats of those particular um, particular phones, or you can use frames to visualize um, those who are connected to two or more of your targets. So I'm going to do that, and now I'm going to use the frames option now. Uh, whilst they're all still highlighted, you can uh, right mouse click um, and choose the combined properties. That means the combined properties of all of the um, phones that you've got highlighted. And then in the style menu, uh, you can go to frames and then choose display a frame and choose the color that you want. I'm quite happy with green. It's a nice, bright, happy color. And so uh, that frame color it will then help to identify, basically answer your question and identify all your phones which are connected to two or more of your target phones. I click on OK, and there we go. So that's the answer to that particular question. Now, that's obviously just one solution. It's one way of reaching that, that particular answer. And clearly, there are going to be many other ways of, of answering that, that particular question. But that's uh, a method that I personally um, would use as I find it relatively uh, sort of logical um, and and, and, and straightforward in, in terms of understanding the, the process. But I hope as well as helping to answer the question, I think I, I also hope that it helps you to recognize how the value of I2 can be realized by combining numerous features that I2 has to offer in order to answer your, your analytical questions. Uh, we didn't just use one of the features. We used um, two different select features and an analyze feature uh, to answer that that particular question. So I hope it helps you to, to realize that actually you combine all of these features in order to answer your analytical questions. So if anybody has any questions or requires any further help on this, I'd be more than happy to help and answer any further questions. Rachel, thanks for some of your time and we hope you'll join us for another episode. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure. Our second solution comes to us from Marcus Pankatz, a 32-year veteran of the Canadian Forces. He's currently section head of the Special Project Cell at Two Intelligence Company, and he sits on the Professional Advisory Committee at Seneca College for the School of Public Safety and Behavioral Studies. He joined IBM Canada in 2011 as a senior technical professional and intelligence subject matter expert. Marcus left IBM and is now Director of Security and Intelligence Operations for Versatile, an analytics company. He's a recognized intelligence expert and public speaker in Canada and the Caribbean. Marcus, thanks for some of your time. Welcome to the channel and take it away. So Manny, I see this is uh, two problems. Uh, the first step is getting the relevant data away from our prepared chart here. So this is assuming that we've managed to import everything um, as necessary. So uh, we're specifically interested between the dates of July 7th and July 21st. So how do we do that in a very simple sort of way without all kinds of crazy queries? So under analyze, uh, you'll notice that there's bar charts and histograms. And so that'll pop up the side pane. And from here, because I'm specifically interested in, in date and time, I'm just going to click on uh, date and time as a histogram. And that will bring up the pane on the bottom where I can easily select uh, the dates that are in question. So in this particular case, uh, we're looking, as I said, from July 7th to the 21st. So if we look at July right here, and we make sure just hovering over and it'll pop up the time date timestamp. There we go, and select that. And you'll notice that a bar comes up. It tells you exactly uh, uh, the date and times that it's between. And of course, we have the 21st over on this side. And really, all I have to do is just grab the slider bar and ensure that it captures all the, uh, the, uh, the relevant time period. And you'll notice that on the screen as I do it in the analyst workspace, 
that it highlights all the relevant phone calls that are in place. So now that we've actually uh, isolated that data very quickly, uh, you'll notice that in under the same analyze field that we have copied a new chart. So from here, I want to click on the down button and then we want to copy this to a new association chart. So very quickly, it'll grab all the information that I just had. So those relevant calls between those two dates and populates it in a new chart. Okay, Manny, the next phase that we're going to move into is finding phones which have been contacted or in contact with more than two target phones. And so now that we've segregated away that data, the, the clean stuff and the time period that we're looking at, uh, the next phase is firstly is, is getting to our target phones. So I can do that manually in this case. Uh, if I know my phones, uh, I can go to, um, for instance, uh, analyze and list items, and I can select my phones if I know what they are from here, simply just by hitting control, selecting those phones, and they may have, they will appear on my on my chart surface. Uh, in this case, uh, it's my target phones. It's a small enough data set. I can just select them by hand. Okay, there we go. Now, after I've gone through this process, no matter which approach that I take to it, I really want to make sure I don't lose track, so I have to do this all over again. So I'm just going to go to select, and we'll see the selection sets here. And as they're highlighted, I can add them to the set. So even if I misclick off to the side, I don't really have to worry because I can just go back and I can select the members of the set again, and they appear. So now that we've done that, uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to connect these phones together through the larger data set, how they're networked with one another. So when we do this, all I have to do is right mouse click on one of the target phones, ensuring that they're all highlighted. And then I can go to add finding network or find or add to find network. And so here, uh, we'll have all our target phones listed. And very simply, all I have to do is just find network and it defines how they're connected one degree away from each other uh, in the chart itself. So in order to be able to maintain track of what the original network is, you'll notice on the bottom that there's format network. Uh, I also have a few options that I can exercise from here. I can change the color any which way I want, those sort of things. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to use the generic uh, stock default uh, format and just click on format network. So from here, we can see that first off, as I highlight it, I can see that my target phone is part of selection one. And we see that just under the phone number there. But we also see that the target phones are in red and the associated phones through the network are in blue. So keeping all my entities here highlighted, the next part is, is that we want to ensure that any phones that are connected between two of the target phones are also selected in our network. So very easy thing to do. I just go up here again, remaining in the select um, portion or tool set of Analyst Notebook. I have between selected and hit the drop down menu on there. And now we want to look at entities linked to more than one selected entity. And then so from here, we see that there's an addition to our, uh, to our network. And again, what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to do it a slightly different way this time, but you'll notice on the top here, there's the button bar, uh, the mini button bar, and I just click on that. And now I'm progressed into a new chart. And we're done. So those are the easiest steps to be able to answer those two questions uh, with the tool set that exists in Analyst Notebook. Marcus, thanks for some of your time. And we hope to talk to you again. For sure, Manny. Thanks a lot. If you enjoyed this episode and you're not already subscribed, Click that subscribe button and hit that bell so you don't miss any of our new episodes. See you next time.